Welcome to the Electrical and Electronic Engineering Lecture Series. Your anchor person is Professor Michael C. Ndinechi. Our topic today is basic electronics and we'll be looking at semiconductors. Before we proceed, please follow us in this lecture series by subscribing, like, and share so that you will receive notifications of subsequent lectures. Let's look at intrinsic semiconductors. Materials in their pure state can be classified as conductors or insulators. However, some materials when in their pure state behave as insulators, but when doped with other materials, behave as conductors. These type of materials are called intrinsic semiconductors, and they have conductivity intermediate between conductors and insulators. Conductors have resistivity of the order of 10 raised to power minus 6 ohms here. Here, the valence electron is so loosely bound that it can readily escape and is then free to move throughout the crystal lattice. This allows an electric current to be easily produced with the application of an electric field of any magnitude. On the other hand, insulators have resistivity of the order of 10 raised to power 14 ohms here. There are so many valency electrons as there are energy levels in the valency band. Consequently, no valency electron in the full valency band can absorb the energy given by an electric field unless another electron takes a lower place. This cancels the current due to the first electron. While there is an upper empty conduction band above, the relatively large gap of a few electron volts is such that moderate values of electric field strength do not provide enough energy to move the electrons across the gap. Thus, insulators do not conduct, at least not until the applied voltage is sufficiently large to force the electrons across the energy gap when the material then breaks down. An increase in temperature, if, given an, if great enough, will cause sufficient thermal agitation for some electrons to cross the gap to the upper empty band. This process is known as thermal excitation. In general, the conductivity of insulators tend to increase with temperature. Most common materials like germanium and silicon, when pure, behave as insulator and is said to be an intrinsic semiconductor. As a result of thermal excitation, electrons are raised to the conduction band and contribute to electrical conduction. At any given temperature, materials with small energy gaps conduct more readily. Thus, the conductivity of germanium at room temperature is very much greater than that of silicon. The movement of electrons from the valency band to the conduction band causes the valency band to be no longer completely filled. Some valency electrons can gain energy from an applied electric field to occupy levels left vacant by those electrons that have moved to the conduction band. This, in effect, is the movement of positive holes in the valency band. Conduction in the material is thus in terms of negative and positive charge carriers, that is, electrons and holes in equal numbers. Figure 1 shows the the bands for conductor, insulator, and semiconductors. Extrinsic semiconductor. The relatively low conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor may be increased considerably by the introduction of impurities. When impurity is introduced to a semiconductor material, the resulting semiconductor is called an extrinsic semiconductor. Here, conduction occurs, and at normal operating temperatures, this is large compared with the intrinsic conduction component. Then, it gives rise to n-type semiconductor. If a pentavalent impurity element such as, an, so, such as arsenic or antimony is introduced into, for instance, a germanium crystal, then only four of the five Outer valency electrons in each atom is used in forming covalent bonds with the nearby germanium atom. The fifth electron, at even relatively low temperatures, acquires sufficient energy for it to break away and be raised into the conduction band where it can move freely and increase the conductivity. Atoms of impurity elements 
with five valency electrons are referred to as donors because they donate electrons to the crystal. The semiconductor is then said to be N-type, that is negative type, because electrons carry negative sign. In such materials, the electrons are the majority carriers as opposed to the thermally liberated holes, which are minority carriers. Note also that in N-type material, the impurity atoms become positive ions, which are not free to move. Thus, donor atoms provide fixed positively charged ions and an equal number of electrons which move about in the crystal. The material as a whole is electrically neutral or uncharged. P-type semiconductor. The intrinsic semiconductor atoms may be displaced by atoms of trivalent elements such as boron or gallium. In this case, there is an incomplete valency band. The missing electron constitutes a hole which may be neutralized by an electron moving into it from a nearby bond. In the absence of external forces, the hole moves at random from one covalent bond to another and acts as a positive charge carrier. Atoms of these materials are referred to as acceptors because they accept electrons from the adjacent germanium or silicon atoms. The semiconductor is then said to be P-type. The holes are the majority carriers as their number is very large compared with the thermally liberated electrons, which are the minority carriers. Then, the PN junction. The PN junction refers to a boundary between the two types of semiconductor in, which, in such a way that the material is in effect a single crystal with lattice structure matched throughout the junction area. Such an interface may be produced by alloying. The formation of PL junction causes some holes from the P-type material and some electrons from the M-type material to diffuse towards each other and combine. This process occurs momentarily in the immediate area of the junction known as the barrier region. The fixed positive donor ions in the M-type material and the fixed negative acceptor ions in the P-type material are left uncompensated. This positive charge on the N side and negative charge on the P side of the junction is thus a potential barrier and may be represented by a battery connected across the junction as shown in Fig 2. The difference of potential and hence electric field established across the junction is such as to prevent further movement of both holes and electrons at the junction, thus giving rise to a depletion of these charge carriers at the junction. And this region is referred to as the depletion layer. The concept of PN junction is very necessary in electrical engineering because it forms the basis for all electronic component design. Then, the first product is the diode. A semiconductor diode is a junction between a P-type and an N-type semiconductor, otherwise known as a PN junction. It allows current to flow in one direction but restrains the flow in the other direction, except for a small leakage current, IS. The circle symbol is as shown. Current will flow in the direction of the arrow. Semiconductor diodes are used in a variety of applications such as in clippers, comparators, rectifiers, and voltage doubler circuits. The characteristics of diodes. The general form of the IV characteristic of a junction diode is as shown in Fig. 4. The current flow in the forward direction is very large compared to that in the reverse direction. The reverse current through the uh, diode varies greatly with temperature and with the semiconductor materials used. If the reverse voltage is sufficiently large, the reverse current increases sharply and the reverse voltage breakdown occurs. In the reverse bias condition, the reverse saturation current, otherwise known as the leakage current, IS, is of the order of the several nanoampere and several microampere. Leakage current is very temperature dependent and it is found that the reverse saturation current approximately doubles for every 10 degrees centigrade rise in temperature. The character is as shown. The left is the reverse direction and the right is the forward direction. 
At the reverse breakdown voltage, otherwise known as the peak inverse voltage, the diode will break down and unless the current is limited by a resistor, the, the device will be damaged. Diodes are not used on this part of the characteristics except in the case of Zina diodes as shown in Fig. 4. The current in the diode is given by equation 1 as a function of the leakage current, Is. Equation 1 ignores certain factors relating to the structure of the diode material, but clearly shows that as V increases in the reverse direction, that is, V is negative, the expression rapidly becomes I equals minus Is. In the forward direction of applied voltage, the diode exhibits an effective voltage step before the current increases to an appreciable amount. The magnitude of the step or cutting voltage depends on the material used, being about 300 millivolts for germanium and 600 millivolts for silicon. The leakage current IS is highly temperature dependent as said and is given by the equation below. For germanium, IS doubles for approximately every 10 degrees centigrade and for silicon for 7 degrees centigrade. This cage current limits the range of temperatures over which the device can usefully be employed. For germanium devices, the temperature range is usually restricted to below 75 degrees, while for silicon operated devices, it can be 130 degrees and above. Another feature of a junction diode which limits its performance is that the junction capacitance, the value of which is dependent on various factors, including the magnitude and polarity of the voltage across the junction. During current conduction, charge is stored in the capacitance so that when the junction polarity is reversed, the current does not immediately switch off but continues until the stored charge has been used. However, in switching, there is the need to charge up the junction capacitance, which defines the maximum spe switching speed. This is a there is a special type of diode which makes use of a metal to silicon bond and which has negligible charge storage called the short key diode. It is like a junction diode, but a, with a lower cutting voltage. Short key diodes are extensively used in special clamping arrangements to improve the switching speed of logic gates employing junction devices. Zener diode. A diode based on the reverse direction is shown in Fig. 4. Since the breakdown characteristic is so abrupt, the diode may be used as a reference diode. Such diodes are referred to avalanche or Zener diodes depending on their breakdown mechanism. The term Zener is commonly used for all breakdown diodes. The symbol for Zener diode is as shown in Fig. 5. Zener effect occurs when the electric field in the depletion layer is large enough to produce electron hole pairs by pulling electrons forcefully, forcibly away from the parent atom, that is, by breaking the covalent bonds. This causes an increase in free charge carriers and hence a large increase in current for small increases in voltage. The voltage at which breakdown occurs can be chosen by a stable choice of doping and this gives a wide range of zener diodes stable for voltage stabilizations. With a high level of doping, the depletion layer will be narrow so that a small voltage will establish a high enough field in the depletion layer to cause breakdown. In, the, in a lightly doped junction, the depletion layer will be wide and the applied voltage will require being large in order to give the electric field necessary for breakdown. Thank you for listening. Please. Subscribe and drop your comments.